Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Shake Hand with Life YouTube channel. I am Narendra Sharma. In this video, we are going to study hypothesis testing using one way ANOVA using coding method. Right. In previous video, we had studied the hypothesis testing using one way ANOVA using direct method. When we use the direct method to, to find the F ratio for one way ANOVA. Right. But in this video, we are going to find the F ratio using coding method for one way ANOVA. Right. So stay till the end of this video and make sure that you have subscribed Shake Hand With Life YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notifications of my latest video lectures. Right. So again, we take the same example. The production of three varieties of wheat in metric ton per acre. So we have three samples A, B and C. Right. Okay. For A, we take the production for variety of wheat A from four, from four different fields. So this is 6 metric ton, 7 metric ton, 3 metric ton and 8 metric ton. And for variety B, it is 5 metric ton, 5 metric ton, 3 metric ton and 7 metric ton. For variety C, it is 5 metric ton, 4 metric ton, 3 metric ton and 4 metric ton. Right. So the example is same which we had taken in the previous video. When we used the direct method for one way ANOVA. Now in this video, we are going to use the coding method for one way ANOVA, right? Now the outcome is, what is our outcome? Outcome is the production of three varieties of wheat, right? So here we have different varieties of seed we have taken for the production of three varieties of wheat, right? So the factors affecting the results. So what is our result? The production of three varieties of wheat, right? The production of three varieties of wheat. And what, how many factors are there? There is only one factor. What is the factor? The variety of seed used for the production of variety of wheat, right? The seed we used for the production of three varieties of wheat. So there is only one factor, which is the variety of seed. We have different variety of seed used for the production of all three varieties of wheat, right? Now, the null hypothesis. Now, the null hypothesis. What should be the null hypothesis assumed as? The null hypothesis is assumed as the production of all three varieties are equal. Okay, all three varieties are equal. Production of all three varieties are equal. What does it mean? It means that if this factor, the variety of seed, doesn't affect the production of three varieties of wheat, then in that case, the production of all three varieties of wheat are equal, right? And what is the significance level we are taking here? We are taking here the 5% significance level, right? So this is the information we have and using all this information, we are going to use one way ANOVA for testing this hypothesis, which is production of all three varieties are equal, right? Now to solve this problem, in the first step, step number one, we first state the null and alternative hypothesis like we had in the previous video when we used the direct method, right? So again, in the first step, we go in the same way, right? So the null hypothesis is, is assumed as the mu A, mu A equal to mu B equal to mu C. This is our null hypothesis and it implies the variety of seed has insignificant effect. Insignificant effect. It implies the variety of seed doesn't affect the production of the varieties of wheat. So all three varieties of wheat have equal production, 
right so the mu a mu is the mean production of variety a mu b is the mean production of variety c and mu c is the mean production of variety c all three varieties of wheat a b and c equal production right so the alternative hypothesis is assumed as h a is assumed as not all three are equal right so in that case in that case in that case the mu a not equal to mu b right mu b not equal to mu c for alternative hypothesis for alternative hypothesis it implies the variety of seed has significant effect that means the variety of seed affect the production of all three varieties of wheat significantly and all three varieties of wheat the production of all three varieties of wheat differ from each other right so this is the first step when we state the null and alternative hypothesis and which is necessary because we want to test the null hypothesis right so this is our null hypothesis this is our null hypothesis which we want to test which we want to test h not such that mu a equal to mu b equal to mu c this is we want to test right now in step 2 in step 2 we calculate sum of scares for total variation right so this time we use the correction factor in place of mean value right and subtract the correction factor from the sum of square of each element to calculate the sum of scares for total variation right so how many elements we have so we have 12 elements right we have 12 elements so n equal to 12 here and now we sum the t is the summation of all 12 elements right so 6 plus 7 plus 3 So thirteen plus three, sixteen plus eight, twenty-four, twenty-four plus five, twenty-nine, twenty-nine five plus five, thirty-four, thirty-four plus three, thirty-seven, thirty-seven plus seven, forty-four, forty-four plus five, forty-nine, forty-nine plus four, fifty-three, fifty-three plus three, fifty-six, fifty-six plus four, sixty. So the summation of all twelve elements we have. 60 right now the correction factor the correction factor is the square of t square of t so t has t is the 60 square of t divided by the number of elements so 60 multiplied by 60 divided by 12 we get 300 right now the sum of square for total variation or the total ss is equal to sum of square of each element right so sum of square of each element the square of 6 square of 6 is 36 square of 7 is 49 square of 3 is 9 right and square of 8 is 64 square of 5 is 25 square of 5 is again 25 the square of 3 is 9 square of 7 is 49 square of 5 is 25 square of 4 is 16 square of 3 is 9 and square of 4 is 16 here so the sum of all these elements sum of all these squares we have 332 when we add all the values and the t square by n is 300 so which we already calculated which is the correction factor The correction factor is 300. So 332 minus 300, we get 32. Right. The sum of squares for total variation is equal to 32. Now in step three, in step three we calculate the sum of squares for variation between the samples. Right. So we have three samples, A, B, and C. and we want to calculate the sum of scares for variation between these three samples 
so we have n equal to 12 the number of total elements in all three samples we have 12 elements and the sum of all these 12 elements is equal to 60 which we have already calculated and the correction factor we already calculated which is t square divided by n which is equal to 300 right now the sum of scares for variation between the samples is equal to sigma which is the summation of square of square of tj tj is the sum of the element of sample a so sum of all the elements of sample a tj then sum of the for the first sample then sum of all the elements of sample b which is equal to 20 then sum of all the elements of sample c which is equal to 60 16 right and then we divide the sum of each element square of sum of each element uh, square of sum of each sample by the number of elements in each sample so we have four elements in a four elements in a and then four elements in b and then four elements in c right so how to calculate the sum of square for variation between the samples here we go so i'll show you again so the for sample a just for sample a we have four elements right and the sum of all elements in sample a is 24 so the 24 square of 24 divided by the number of elements which we have four right then plus sum of then add the sum of all elements of sample b which we have 20 then square of 20 divided by the number of element and the number of elements are 4 in sample b right now for sample c for sample c the sum of all elements of sample c we have 16 here then square of 16 then divided by the number of elements we have 4 here so square of 24 divided by 4 then square of 20 divided by 4 then square of 16 divided by 4 and then subtract the correction factor which is 300 now square of 24 is 576 right square of 20 is 400 then square of 16 is 256 then divide 576 by 4 we get 144 144 then divide 400 by 4 we get 100 then divide 256 by 4 we get 64 64 right and then if we add all these three 144 plus 100 plus 16 we get 308 and because subtract and subtract the correction factor which is 300 we get 8 here. So this is the sum of scares for variation between the samples by coding method. Now in step number 4 we calculate the sum of scares for variation within the samples. Right. So the formula for calculating the sum of scares for variation within the samples we have sigma x square ij minus sigma tj square divided by nj. So the sigma x square ij comes out as 332 which we already done in step number 2 right. So you can rewind the video and understand how we did the calculation for calculating the sum of scare for variation sum of scares for total variation. So here we had calculated the sigma x square ij right so which came out as 332 right okay so sigma tj square divided by nj comes out as 308 this we already calculated in step number 3 when we were calculating the sum of scare for variation between the samples so here we have sigma tj square divided by nj and here we have the calculation so you can also rewind the video and go to step number three and understand 
how we did the calculation for sigma tj squared divided by nj and the value came out as 308. So here we use 308 for sigma tj squared divided by nj and when we subtract 308 from 332 we get 24. So this is the value for sum of square sum of squares for variation within the samples. Now in step number 5 we calculate the F ratio. F ratio or we can say that the F statistic by preparing the table for 1 way ANOVA. Right. Okay. So we have calculated the sum of square for variation between the samples which is which is equal to 8 and the sum of square for variation within the samples which is equal to 24 and the sum of square for total variation which is equal to 32. And the number of samples M is equal to 3 number of elements in all samples n equal to 12. So now the now we prepare the table for 1 via ANOVA. So the source of variation and the sum of square. So source of variation in column number 1. So here we have the source of variation and in column number 2 sum of squares. So the sum of squares for variation between the samples we have 8 right and the sum of square for variation within the samples we have 24 and the sum of squares for total variation we have 32 right okay now we calculate the corresponding degrees of freedom so the degrees of freedom corresponding to sum of squares for variation between the samples because it is between the samples therefore number of samples equal to 3 therefore m minus 1 equal to 3 minus 1 so 3 minus 1 equal to 2 so the degrees of freedom for sum of squares for variation between samples is 2. Now the degrees of freedom corresponding to sum of squares, sum of squares within the samples. Here we have number of samples m equal to 3 right and the total number of elements equal to 12. So 12 n minus m or we can say that the 12 minus 3 we have 9. So the degrees of freedom corresponding to sum of squares for variation within the samples equal to 9. Now the degrees of freedom corresponding to sum of squares for total variation is because it is the total variation. So the total number of elements in all three samples equal to 12. Therefore it is 12 minus 1 equal to 11. So here is the degrees of freedom for sum of square for total variation. Right. Now we calculate the mean square for variation between the samples. So it is the sum of squares for variation between the samples which is equal to 8 divided by the corresponding degrees of freedom which is equal to 2 and we have 4 here. Right. Okay. Now we calculate the mean square for variation within the samples. So the sum of squares, sum of squares for variation within samples is 24. So here we have the 24 divided by the corresponding degrees of freedom which is 9 and we have 2.67. Now we calculate the F ratio or F statistic. So the F ratio or F statistics is the ratio of mean square for variation between the samples which is equal to 4 and mean square for variation within samples which is 2.64. So here we have the ratio which is 4 divided by 2.64 and we have 1.5 here. So this is the F ratio or F statistics corresponding to the mean square for variation between the samples and mean square within the samples. Mean square for variation within the samples. Right. Now in step number 6 we find the F limit. So F limit is the maximum value is that maximum value when F ratio the value of F ratio cross the cross the F limit we reject the null hypothesis okay so how to find the F limit so F limit here we have F29 so the 2 and 9 are the degrees of freedom so 2 is the degrees of freedom corresponding to the numerator of F ratio and 9 is the degrees of freedom corresponding to the denominator of the F ratio. 
Now, how do we find out the F limit from F limit is the critical value of F, F distribution and because we we have 5% significance level therefore the table is for F distribution at 5% significance level. So in numerator we have 2, in numerator we have 2 and in denominator we have 9. So the, the cross section value so in this column and in this column we have 4.26 4.26 is the F limit or the critical value so 4.26 is the maximum value when the value of F ratio cross this value we reject the null hypothesis and finally in step number 7 we have F test and conclusion so F test is comparison of F ratio with F limit. So here the F ratio is 1.5 and F limit is 4.26 and clearly we have F ratio is less than F limit. Therefore statistically, statistically we fail to reject the null hypothesis which we assumed as mu A equal to mu B equal to mu C. Right. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. That's why we continue with the null hypothesis and we conclude that the variety of seed, variety of seed used for the production of wheat has insignificant effect. That means the variety of seed has no effect on the production of three varieties of wheat. And that's it. If you have any question or suggestions, then please do write your feedback in the comment box below. Hit the like button and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Switch to Shake Hand with Life YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe the channel and hit the bell to get the notifications of my latest video lectures. Visit on shakehandwithlife.in to download the course notes and ebooks in PDF. See you soon in my next video.